your money, or your life. If someone puts a gun on your ribs and said those words, what would you do? Most of us would give all our money. The threat works because we value our lives more than we value our money. Or do we really value our lives? Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about nine steps to transforming your relationship with money and achieving financial independence. The result is liberating your most precious resource, your time, to make room for more happiness, more freedom, and more meaning. What does it mean to transform your relationship with money? It does not mean getting more money or less money. It means knowing how much is enough money for you to have a life you love now and in the future. It means shifting from being a victim of money and the economy to making conscious choices. Anyone can do this. By the way, what do I mean by financial independence? At the most basic level, financial independence means no longer having to work for money. These steps completely changed my relationship with money. This changed my mindset when it came to work and money and how it kind of fits into my life. We are making a dying rather than making a living. Once upon a time, earning a living was the means to an end. This means was earning and the end was living. But over time, our relationship with money, earning it, spending it, investing it, owning it, protecting it, worrying about it, has taken over the major part of our lives. Most of us spend more than 40 hours of the week's total of 168 hours. I'm sure you would agree with me. With all that time spent on and around our jobs, is it any wonder that we have come to take our identities from them? When someone asks us, what do you do? We don't say I do programming or plumbing or driving. We say, I am a plumber, I am a programmer, or I am a driver. We forget that work is just a part of our life. Are we really making a living from work? Do we come home from our work with more life and energy? Where is all that life that we supposedly made at work? For many of us, we are not making a living. Instead, we are making a dying. We are essentially giving away our life energy on this thing that we call our job in the hope that it's going to bring us joy and happiness with our friends and family. In every study that has been done on happiness, spending time with friends and family led to a happy, meaningful and fulfilling life. And yet, most of the hours that we spend or our life energy is devoted to our jobs and work. The next major lesson I learned, what is enough in an environment of more is better. Enough is like the horizon that's always receding and there is a concept that really explains this and it's called the fulfillment curve. It shows the relationship between the experience of fulfillment and the amount of money that we spend. At the beginning of our lives, more material possessions like cars, homes, means more fulfillment. But as we get our basic needs met and as we move from the bare necessities to the nice to have things, the positive relationship between new things and fulfillment becomes more deeply embedded. We then move beyond nice to have to expensive items, luxurious items. And throughout these stages, we increasingly come to associate more money with increased levels of fulfillment because that's the way the curve is going. But then one day we hit a fulfillment ceiling where more money and more possessions don't actually give us lasting fulfillment. And beyond that peak of enough, we then start to just accumulate more and more clutter. The more and more stuff we buy, and then the fulfillment curve starts to go downwards. The more we spend, the more we accumulate, but the less satisfaction we are able to get from these possessions. And so with this in mind, what I think about all my time is, where is my concept of enough? What is enough for me? Like in all the different aspects of my life, be it consulting, entrepreneurship, or investments. In fact, there is research from Nobel Prize winning economist Daniel Kahneman about the relationship between money and happiness. And he finds that at a certain point, more money does not lead to more happiness. That point of enough 
in some of the studies is around $75,000 a year. So ultimately, fulfillment should guide our thoughts about money for transforming our relationship with money. Next, think of money as our life energy, your life energy. What does money equal to life energy mean? It's fairly straightforward, but groundbreaking. You pay for money with your time. You choose how to spend it. The concept of money is quite hard to define, but what's always going to be true is that money is what we exchange our life energy for. Our life energy is essentially our time here on earth. The precious hours of life available to us, this is a non-refundable currency. Every day at work, you exchange your time for money. You might think about skills and everything else, but it's really time for money. So everything that we buy is actually equal to hours of life energy that we have given up to earn the money to buy that thing. And once we start thinking of money as this proxy for life energy, we can really calculate the actual cost of material things we buy in terms of life energy, instead of calculating them in dollars. As you can see from this chart, if you're 40 years old, you can expect to have approximately 356,500 hours of life energy left before you die. This is the figure for life expectancy at various ages. An interesting representation of how much life do we have. Assuming about half of your time is spent on necessary body maintenance, like sleeping, eating, eliminating, washing and exercising, you only have 178,000 hours of life energy remaining for such discretionary uses such as your relationship to yourself, your relationship to others, your creative expression, your contribution to your community, your contribution to the world, achieving inner peace and harmony, and finally, holding down a job. Now that you know money is something you trade life energy for, you have the opportunity to set new priorities for your use of that valuable commodity. After all, is there anything more important to you than your life energy? Now, keeping this in mind, for example, if we are planning to buy a new iPad Air that costs $800, and let's say we are working in a job that pays us $20 an hour, that would be equal to 40 hours of our life energy. From the hours you're left with from this graph, we are exchanging for this iPad about one full week of full-time work at your workplace. So now we can ask ourselves, is that iPad really worth it? The answer you could get could be completely different depending on the work you do. Now that you know about life energy and the real value of the material things we are after, how do we move towards financial freedom or financial independence? Let me show you a clear path with nine steps to financial freedom. Carefully applying all the steps automatically makes your personal finances much, much better. These are also very basic fundamental practices of any business and you are a business. You are in the business of maximizing the return you get in happiness for every hour of life energy spent. That's your business. That's my business too. Step one, making peace with the past. How much have you earned in your life? Find out your total lifetime earnings, the sum total of your gross income from the first penny you ever earned to your most recent paycheck. Calculate that. What have you got to show for it? Find out your net worth by creating a personal balance sheet of assets and liabilities, everything you own and everything you owe. Everything you own is an asset and everything you owe is a liability. So create such a personal balance sheet. That'll help you make peace with the past. You will know how much did you actually make and what is your actual net worth. That's the first step in this financial independence journey. Step two, being in the present. Tracking your life energy. We already know the concept of life energy now, but how much are you trading your life energy for? Establish the actual costs in time and money required to maintain your job and compute your real hourly wage. How do you do that? Let's say your yearly salary is approximately $30,000. Let's assume that you work on average 40 hours a week, 45 weeks a year. This includes five weeks of paid vacation plus additional days off such as Christmas Eve. And now if you have just uh, four weeks of vacation, these numbers would change slightly, but I'm making an assumption of five weeks of paid vacation here. Some people would say that 
their hourly wage is therefore 30,000 divided by 40 times 45, which is equal to 16 and a half dollars. But this estimate is too generous. What about all other activities that you wouldn't have done if you did not have to go for work? They often cost both money and time, right? So let's include a couple of those as well. Number one, commuting, going to your job and coming back every day. Let's say that this is another five hours of work each week at the cost of $80. Next comes costumes. If the clothes that you wear to your work is not the type that you would normally use, this must be included too, right? So I would say one hour and $15 per week. I'll put it under costumes. Next comes decompression. Do you feel full of energy when you come home or do you just want to sink into the sofa with a drink to relax? I would put five hours and $20 per week for that. And let's not forget about food, entertainment to escape the stress, time out vacations, job related illness, and other expenses such as babysitting and anything similar. When we add these hours to working hours and subtract the cost from yearly income, we find that you're earning about $6.10 per hour. And this is pre-tax again. But after taxes, it would be even lower, I would say around $4.50. That's your actual hourly wage in this example. So that's how you can calculate your true hourly wage, right? Keep track of every cent that comes into and goes out of your life as per this step based on your true hourly wage. That's how you'll track your life energy. Step three, where is it all going? I would also call this the monthly tabulation. Every month, categorize your expenses. Sum up all expenses within categories generated by your own unique spending pattern. Then put total income on the paper as well. Convert dollars spent in each category to hours of life energy, like how we did in the iPad example, using your real hourly wage as computed in step number two. Step four, these three questions will transform your life. On your monthly tabulation from step three, ask these three questions of each of your category totals expressed as hours of life energy and record your responses. For example, if you spent 40 hours of your life energy on electronics such as an iPad, you should ask, did I receive fulfillment, satisfaction and value in proportion to life energy spent? Is this expenditure of life energy in alignment with my values and life purpose? And how might this expenditure change if I did not have to work for money? For each question in each category, evaluate whether the expense should increase, decrease, or stay the same for your optimal fulfillment. This is the heart of the program. Step five, making life energy visible. Create a large wall chart, plotting the total monthly income and total monthly expenses from your monthly tabulation. Put it where you will see it every day. Using this chart for more than three months usually results in a 20% reduction in costs. Your wall chart may benefit from spreading larger unusual costs like a huge expense across 12 months. This chart's significance is that it will automatically raise your income to expense ratio. It will help you save more because you're tracking everything. Slowly we can add a line to your wall chart called investment income. This income might come from interest, capital gains, or rents, or royalties. Interest could be periodic payments from, uh, for instance, bonds or savings accounts. Dividends are a share of profits paid out to owners of stocks. Capital gains, which is the difference between the procurement price and the selling price of an asset. Rents, which is cash for owning and leasing real estate. Royalties payments to owners of intellectual property, franchisees, natural properties, and so on. Keep in mind that if you maintain that difference between income and expenses, your capital, and what is capital? Capital is the money that makes money. Your capital and investment income will grow. Investment income is great since it puts money in your pocket without requiring your life energy. And this is key. You don't have to spend any life energy to get investment income. Step six, now value your life energy and minimize spending. Learn and practice intelligent use of your life energy, which is nothing but money. It will result in lowering your expenses and increasing your savings. This will create greater fulfillment, integrity, and alignment in your life. Step seven, maximize income. Respect the life energy you're putting into your job. Money is simply something you trade your life energy for. 
Trade it with purpose and integrity for increased earnings. Step number eight is the capital and the crossover point. Each month, apply the following equation to your total accumulated capital and post the monthly independence income as a separate line on your wall chart. So the equation is capital into current long-term interest divided by 12 months will give you the monthly investment income. You may stop working for money if your monthly investment income matches your monthly costs. The crossover point is here. After this, you're financially independent. You don't have to work for money. With a chart like this, work won't be painful. It will be another day, which is one step closer to financial freedom. And last step, step number nine, investing for financial independence. This step will help you become knowledgeable and sophisticated about income generating investments that can provide a consistent income, sufficient for your needs over the long term. As we talked about, set up your financial plan using the three pillars. Number one, capital, the income generating core of your financial independence. Next is cushion. You should have enough ready cash, earning bank interest maybe to cover six months of expenses. This is really a safety net. And the last one is cash. The surplus of funds resulting from your continued practice of the nine steps will help you with this one. So that was the formula for financial freedom, guys. I hope you found it helpful. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed already. Thanks very much for watching. See you in my next video.